my peaceful streaming. Um, I'm yet again playing Power Wash Simulator because <clears throat> I'm still sick. And um, it's the easiest thing for my brain. Let's see, there were the specials, no specials, but the stuff coming up was really cool. So yeah, I'm gonna do the fire station. Let's see, our fire station's as mucky as a pig pen. Ordinary, ordin bleh, ordinarily, we just break out a few crates of the cold stuff and let the strong arms and hoses have it. But what with being sent here, there, and everywhere in search of the mayor's dang cat, we just don't have the time. I'm messaging you from the lower branches of an oak tree at Great River that I can already see has no cat in it. Your name came highly recommended. Thanks, Denver. Okay. Now, uh, I am going to be eating some coffee cake. Because I kind of lost track of time. And I don't like to eat after like 6 o'clock at night. Especially coffee cake that's like 600 calories. Although I'm only having half of it. Um, cool. I mean, it's a little um, spread out, but I wonder if I'll get to do any of these other places, like the diner. I hope so. Food market, supermarket, that would be kind of cool. Okay, so I'm going to take a look around the place. Okay, it's going to be a little tedious, I think, because of just lots of all the same. Oh my God, I get to do the fire tower, the practice tower. How am I going to do that? I guess I can. Huh. Can I build a scaffolding? Or do I like, do I clean the inside? Oh, what do you know? I have to clean it inside. Huh. But how do I do the outside? Can I move the scaffolding? Oh, I can. Okay. This one is really awesome. Um, of course, I want to do this first, but let's see. On this side's a little more interesting. I think I'm going to be using detergent on the like big um, on the big, like just blank parts cause a little boring. So, whoa. Okay. Okay. I guess we're going to start here. Um, now if this were real life, where would the, uh, water drain to? Excuse me, I'm just grabbing another bite of coffee cake. We went to Star... Excuse me, that's really bad. We went to Starbucks yesterday. Oh yeah, I'm going to need soap. On the way back from the doctor. Wow, that could be tedious. Um... Because I hadn't had a pumpkin spice latte yet this year. Not that I love them, but it seems like it's one of those things like eating candy corn at Halloween that like you just have to do once a year. So actually I ended up getting an apple crisp macchiato. Wasn't really sure how I felt about that, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure why they didn't do it as a latte. I mean, I do not like Starbucks's coffee, but I like their syrups. Like Pete's, which started near us, has, their coffee is superior, just their plain coffee. But their syrups just, uh, I don't know, there's, some of them are just really strange. Strange tasting. 
so that's why I do do Starbucks occasionally. Um, and summer is definitely frappuccinos because I can't really make those myself very easily without making a big mess that I don't feel like cleaning up. So, but because I work from home most of the time now, instead of um, on campus, where I used to work five days a week, I used to get, not every morning, but a lot of mornings we'd stop at Pete's, usually Pete's, and get something. Especially in the winter when it was chilly and I really wanted something. Of course, we stopped at McDonald's a lot too. I really need to cut down on McDonald's and stuff like that because my cholesterol is too high. So. This is like. Hmm. Now, if I switch to green, how would that go? Is it still doing a good job? Yeah, it's still doing a good job cleaning. So I don't think there's any need for using yellow instead of green. Yeah, I think that's doing just as well as the yellow did and more quickly. So the question is, do I walk along this as I'm cleaning it? Can I, oh, I can't get up? I can get up, okay. So this ought to be interesting. We'll start over here. husband's talking to my dad my parents are having trouble they have this neighbor who's just a horrible person and I don't say that lately um horrible unhappy person he's one of those short men who and I'm not saying all short men are like this because I actually dated a guy who was much shorter than me for instance who was just a sweetheart and had like no ego um, but he's one of these short men who feels like he needs to prove how much of a man he is because he's short. Um, and he's got some kind of personality disorder on top of it, I think. That's my, like, not professional opinion, but his behavior is, um, is just, unusual let's put it that way um that's so how my parents are rebuilding their fence so this guy decides i mean and it's been all these ridiculous things um like him putting his garbage cans out like deliberately in my parents driveway so that they have to get out and move the trash cans out of their way and claiming more parking like you know, my parents are parking in front of his garage. Well, it's actually a, a street, a public street. Like, no one is able to own the 
the curb in front of their property. You, you know, you don't own it. Um, obviously, you try to be courteous, but there were a couple of situations where my parents really didn't have any choice. Um, like, you know, it was, it was one of those times where it was, I don't know, a holiday or something, or there was something going on in their driveway. They were having work done or something where they had to park one of the cars on the street. And uh, it's just, it's just ridiculous. And then there's, um, this is like, I guess it's called an association where a group of people, a group of families, you know, group of families with property um, around this area, then um, they buy memberships to a park, which has tennis courts and a pool. And that's one of the reasons my parents bought the house or built the house where they did. And um, so there's, there's land that is... It's not public land, but it belongs to this mansion that, like, keeps changing hands. And, like, the people who buy it don't actually live there. They just buy it for an investment. So, you know, everyone uses that land to walk to the park. And um, so one time, um, it was... It was Quite a few years ago, probably was like 10 years ago. Um, we, I think me, my husband, maybe all, maybe my sisters too. And I don't remember exactly who it was. But anyway, we were um, walking from my parents' house to the park. And their neighbor comes out and like accosts me, just comes up and starts yelling at me as I'm like, walking long lands that is not his land um i'm not even walking on his land and he comes up and starts yelling at me i don't even remember what he said but since i knew he was problematic i just i just like ignored him i can't remember what i said i said something just very dismissive um and this guy also thinks that women are just like completely inferior to men. So um, the funny thing is, is like there's me, my two sisters, my mom, my dad, you know, my husband, my son. I mean, it's like half, the, you know, about half of our family is female and about half of our family is male. So it, it's like, you know, he still hasn't seem to come to terms with the fact that the couple live next to him who have three daughters and um, and actually and then they have two granddaughters uh, my son's the only um, boy that was born to me and my two sisters so I don't tend to I learned a long time ago not to just get into fights with people. Um, it never makes me feel better. Uh, it's not that I'm a wuss and just let people walk all over me, but I just deal with it in other ways, in ways other than yelling at people. And there was no reason to engage with this guy at all. I mean, there was, there was absolutely no reason for me to engage with him. I, I I don't remember what he was, I don't remember what his problem was, what he was talking about. Um, so there was that, and then there have been all these incidents over the years. I mean, this man is just so unpleasant, like really, really unpleasant, and just like constantly spoiling for a fight. And my dad is not the kind of person who fights with people at all not verbally not physically not anything like that he's just he gets along with everyone and um he gets really upset when he has one of these confrontations through no choice of his own 
with this neighbor. And so we've told him, like my sisters and I have told him, don't just don't engage with him. You know, just walk away. There's you're not you're not gaining anything. Now my mom likes to fight. So I mean she's she she'll she doesn't tend to de escalate. Um my sisters and I are like, you know, just 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 if you have to be in communication with him, just do it through email or something. Um, my parents have also called the police because of some of this stuff. Um, so anyway, so this guy ha has it in his head that my parents are now this is rebuilding their fence. The fence has been up since they built the house. Uh, can't remember exactly when it was. It. It has to be 13, 14 years, I think. So this is not a new fence. <laughs> They're rebuilding it exactly where they were. Apparently he thinks that he has the chance to, um, to take this opportunity to claim that uh, some of the lands is his. So he's been literally harassing the people building the fence for my parents. And um, my parents have been through the whole thing with this guy about, you know, showing him the surveys. And my husband was just saying to my dad, my, my dad's 80 and my husband's 73. He said, those surveys are from before either one of us were born. So this is, this is like not, you know, the guy has absolutely no leg to stand on, but he's so unpleasant that he actually made um, at least one of the <clears throat> people working on the fence quit. Because obviously the, the poor, poor guy didn't need this and didn't need this verbal harassment. And of course, you know, everyone always worries, well, this person's obviously loony. What if they attack me? So, you know, I mean, I certainly didn't blame them. I don't think my parents blamed them. But, um, so they're going through the whole thing with this guy. And my parents' lawyer, friend slash lawyer, lives nearby uh, and, you know, is part of this association. My dad does a lot of work for him as, like, a contractor. And, um... So he came down, I'm not sure exactly what the upshot was, but my husband was talking to my dad like half an hour ago when I went by and he's upset. So that means that things have not settled down. And it's just like, you know, why do people have to, you know, you could say, why do people have to be so unpleasant? But as I said, there's something wrong with this guy. Um, he's got some kind of personality disorder. He's not your garden variety. Um, male chauvinist jerk. So I, I have no idea what his problem is. And his family tries to appease him. He's got a son who's a pretty decent guy and um, tries to appease him and, you know, has a perfectly fine relationship with my parents, um, especially when this guy is out of the country. I think my parents said they think he's lost it. He lost his job. So he's, I just hope he doesn't end up like going and shooting up my parents' house or something um, with the stress that he seems to be under. But, um, so that's this really enjoyable neighbor stuff. There's a saying that says fences make good neighbors. So in other words, you know, it's best just to have some kind of, you know, border between you and your, and your neighbor. Um, just makes things easier. And hey, that's what my parents are trying to do. They're trying to rebuild the, the fence. And this guy's just being absolutely nuts. So the problem is, 
Um, now my mom doesn't get stressed out about it because, as I said, she doesn't have any trouble fighting. My dad, like his blood pressure goes up and my sisters and I are concerned because, and my husband are concerned because, well, actually my son too has expressed concern because my dad's father died of a heart attack when he was, I think, 52. So we really don't want my dad getting upset. Um, he's already thankfully lived almost 30 years longer than his father did, but we really don't want to lose him any earlier than we have to. So um, I'd like to have a lot more time with him. So it's unpleasant. I mean, luckily my husband was a real estate developer for years and actually still works with um, affordable housing authorities. Um, so he, he enjoys this, all the real estate stuff and he knows like huge amount about it. But, um, and he has the capability to also read all these laws and guidelines and stuff and retain it and be able to like recall it when it's needed. So um, obviously that's really helpful, but it's like, it's very hard to argue with crazy, you know? Because they always come back with something that it's like, it sometimes may absolutely make no sense but, I mean, after all, how do you communicate with someone who is being completely illogical? You can show them all the facts that you want, but if they're determined to ignore reality, then what do you do? Um, I mean, preferably ignore them, but... Um, what I would like is, I can't remember if they have cameras. I'm pretty sure they, pretty sure they do. So I think if they, I think what would be helpful is to, and I guess since we're in California, you have to notify him, is tell him, by the way, we have a camera aimed at where the, the guys are working on, on the fence. So we will have a record of any harassment of them. Um, so you might not, you know, you might want to think twice. Now granted, again, someone who's just not completely in touch with reality might do absolutely nothing. But in a situation like this, it seems like it's a good idea to have a video record of the whole thing so I don't know I just don't want my dad to get stressed out um, it's just you know my sisters and I kept telling him don't engage don't engage and he did he stopped he just we were like there's no point in arguing with him he's a nutcase and I use that term judiciously given that I have depression, my son has depression, and we run a YouTube channel and I have a TikTok account for people with depression and anxiety. So I'm not being uh, careless with that term. I, I mean, he's, he's just like, there's something seriously wrong with him. So, It's like, it's one of those things where there's just no, it's never going to be, like things are not ever going to be completely resolved because he's always going to have something he wants to fight about. So, like I said, we just told dad, don't engage, don't get upset. You know, he's going to cause problems. You know, he's going to be illogical. You know, he's going to act like a child. So like, you know, a crazy child. So just ignore him as much as possible. So, you know, he'll do things that are provocative, like blocking my parents' driveway or something. And we're like, don't engage, just, 
you know, pretend that the person who did it is not anywhere around, you know. It's like I learned from experience that most of the time it's really not worth fighting with people and it's not healthy. Um, I mean, you do it when you have to, but it's like I learned a couple two or three decades ago that it, if someone cut in front of line, in front of me in line, it just wasn't worth fighting about it. Um, it's like, okay, fine. They're a jerk. Um, you know, someone who like deliberately cuts in line, not someone who's kind of spacing out or whatever. But um, it's just not worth it. Um, it's better to to stand there and tell yourself, you know what, I'm the better person. I'm just gonna let it go. I mean, I'm sure that doesn't work for everyone, uh, but for me it works. And, you know, uh, now, you know, I used to get upset and start an argument. And then after I started therapy and realized that I just had a lot of anger that really didn't have anything necessarily to do with the person it was coming out against then I just started kind of like doing a mental shrug and being like well whatever you know it's not important so hey wow I'm doing well um anyway so So, so far, this is a little boring. Like I said, there were going to be these big... I actually can't believe I want that. did that much. You know what it was? It's doing the squares. I like doing the squares. Because then it doesn't seem like it's one huge thing. You're just doing square after square. So, wall top are not done. My guess is that I have to hit the other edge from down below, so. Oh, and this definitely needed some work. I think what I'm probably gonna do is start using detergent though, because this is a little tedious. I kind of thought like maybe I'd be able to do a um, fire engine, fire vehicle, whatever you wanna call it. But unless I missed one, wait a minute. I didn't think about that. If this is one where you can actually go inside, can I go clean the fire engines? Okay, I've got to finish up here. Um, that could be very cool. I mean, that's kind of what I expected. Okay, so that one's done. Um, and office wall done, wall topper not done, but like I said, I think that's because we have to do the, oh, wait a minute, what about this? Did I get everything that I can on this side? Not really. Hmm. 
Okay, I think I got most of what I need to get done from this angle. Okay, so how did I get up here anyway? I climbed a ladder, right? I'm sure. Or something? Uh, I didn't put my ladder. Did I put my ladder up? Maybe I did. Just goes to show. Not completely paying attention. Uh, where's my ladder? Oh, there's my ladder. So yes, I did do that. So these bays, are they? Aw. I can't do any... Can't do any vehicles. That's kind of disappointing. Actually, that's very disappointing. But um, so I think what I'm going to do is I am kind of bored with the roof. Um, I'm going to start using detergent. I know it cuts into my profit, but we'll make it go much more quickly. The really boring parts. So first, I'm going to do. The stairs, ladder, whatever it is. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty dirty. How am I going to get under that bottom one? It's going to be a little tough. Okay. Yes, it wasn't tough. Okay, so... Let's see. Shop. 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 Um, oh, they're only 10 bucks each. Stone cleaner, glass cleaner, metal cleaner, plastic cleaner. Uh, I think, do we have stone or is this, this isn't stone? No. That's, I don't know what. Oh, it shows you. Oh my God, I didn't realize. Okay, I just noticed this. When you, first of all, when you pass over, I'll tell you there's moss dirt, dirt streaks and grime, but then it also tells you what kind of cleaner to use. Okay, I'm sure, I'm sure I, I should have noticed this a long time ago, but that's the way it goes. So there are only um, 10 in stock, which sounds like a lot, but you actually go through these really quickly. Um, so I will be judicious, ju I can talk, judicious, oh, no new clothing, um, with how I use it. So I'll do it on the big open areas that are just tedious. It's weird though, sometimes it seems to make like have like no impact I don't know why I don't think it's a matter of you have to let it sit or anything and then some it's really good go figure so um, uh, I have absolutely no method here Am I out? Almost out. If I'm not out. It's not telling me I'm out, but I think I'm out. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah, it's like... Yeah, see, it's, it's kind of... Kind of hit and miss. I mean, it does definitely help. That's stone, wall topper, doesn't say, oh, it says multi-purpose. Ooh, hey, why is it working so well on that? And it's not, huh. And see, it's not working really well on the red. It works really well on this. That's weird. I mean, should I be keeping it for stuff that works really well on? But I really need it for these big areas that just drive me nuts. I don't know. 
I mean, look at this huge thing of just like blah. It is squares though. I do like the squares. But it's pretty boring. I mean, huh. It's like it, it made absolutely no impact on some of this stuff. I don't get it. Okay, so that's all I'm going to waste on that. I have that whole tower and some other pre pretty boring parts to do, so. Uh, let's use, I'd say, the green. And this is squares, so it makes me happy. <sighs> I got a fever again. Stupid sinus infection or something, I don't know. I know I don't have COVID because I had to go for a test, like my umpteenth million test. Because um, I was sick and my son was sick and then he finds out this friend he had done it together with forgot to tell him. By the way, just before we get together, I want you to know I did have COVID three weeks ago. <sighs> So I have a compromised immune system. It's compromised by medicine. Um, my husband gets pneumonia easily and um, has had treatment for cancer. And so both of us are like kind of like, I wouldn't say high risk, but at risk. We did both get our third vaccine about a month ago because, well, it was recommended, especially because I work on a college campus. Like, I only work there when necessary now, but, you know. Um, Plus, you never know, like we were in Starbucks yesterday. I have no idea if any of, if those people were all vaccinated. I don't even know if the employees were vaccinated. So, um, so anyway, because I was sick, we called up my doctor and asked, and they were like, yeah, you should get a test under the circumstances. So um, I did. And then last year, I decided, like, the campus was doing a study for I think, staff and maybe students, too, I don't know, and faculty, obviously, um, that you could volunteer for, that you would get at least two COVID tests. And I thought, well, hey, that's probably a good idea. This was way before the vaccine. It was actually like a month after um, the shutdown. So it seems like a good idea. So I had two, I think, from, because of that, possibly three, I'm not sure. But then I also had to have two surgical procedures. No, three, actually. So I had to have a test before each one. And then... I actually had to redo one of them because we had to postpone the surgical procedure because I got my second vaccine and got really ill. My son and I both got really ill. Um, you know, like like flu, flu-like symptoms and ch chills and all that stuff. Fever, chills, fever, all that fun stuff. So then, oh God, I had like so many, uh, so many of these tests. Let's see, what else? Oh, well then, to start working on campus again, 
even, you know, intermittently like I do, I had to get a test. And then I had to get another one in August because it was 180 days after my first, my first vaccine, or maybe when the first, I don't know, when my vaccine was um, effective or something. It was 180 days. And now I just got noticed that I have to get another one because it's been like three months since the last one. So I'm definitely close to or at, I'd say, a dozen COVID tests. Like I haven't added them up. There might have even been a, one or two others that I had to have for some reason, or it was recommended that I have. But so I've gone through all the stages. I've gone through the stage where we're in the beginning, where they were like basically pushed the. They were still doing the test for you, and they pushed the swab up so so far that you at an absolute minimum we're sneezing and just in general felt really you were really uncomfortable that's one way to put it it's just really it was very uncomfortable and so i've gone all the way from that to where they kind of pulled back on that you know really extremely intrusive one that felt like it was going up into your brain and then they went to where they just were twirling it in your nostrils but they were still doing it for you and now it seems like it's mostly <clears throat> they have you do it yourself last the first time I went well, I guess the most recent, no, the most recent time I went to campus to get it, it was in the gymnasium and it was just this incredibly elaborate procedure. Um, because basically, you know, you were doing it with instructions so that the person who was helping you with it wasn't going to be touching a million people who possibly had COVID. And, um, but at the same time, excuse me, they wanted it to be accurate and not contaminated. So you had to be really, you had to follow the instructions really carefully. And I have problems with my fine motor skills. So opening like the pack that the swab is in for me and then being able to put it in the test tube like accurately without touching the outside is like one of those really difficult tests for me so I mean I'm not saying this was some kind of hardship but but it's a pain a real pain in the butt but I mean, I'm glad, obviously, they're doing it because, you know, I go, like, when I get, um, when I'm on campus, I get my lunch and usually my bubble tea or fruit tea or whatever. Um, at places that are technically off campus, like, they're right across the street from... Uh, you know, campus buildings, but they're not technically on campus. So, for instance, this summer, I went to, I was in one of them, and it's a really small shop, um, very small, and it's in the basement, so it's in a basement. So there isn't any airflow coming from windows, and so, you know, the people working there were, um, were wearing masks. I was wearing a mask. And there weren't a lot of people because it was summer, you know, in a college town in the summer. 
pretty dead. So, um, especially this year, because we didn't have summer classes. Oh, well, we had online summer classes. So, then this guy comes in, and of course there's, there's a sign saying, you know, you are required to wear a mask, and actually by the, um, by city and county ordinances, you were required to wear a mask inside, which this place definitely was. And this guy just walked in and you could tell that he knew he was supposed to be wearing a mask. Uh, they actually had extra masks too for people if they needed them. But you could tell he was just like, screw you, I'm not gonna wear one, what are you gonna do about it? And there are these kids working behind the counter, like, you know, not to, I'm not trying to denigrate anyone who's young, but when you're younger, a lot of the times you're, you're much less comfortable confronting people. So I guess that's probably what he counted on. So I was like, great, just great. Um, but I was actually surprised at when I went, uh, let's see, I had to go to campus a couple weeks ago. And I was really surprised, pleasantly, at the number of students who were wearing their masks even outside. I was like, wow, I did not expect this, to be honest. And sadly, the vaccine rate for students is actually higher than the vaccine rate for staff and faculty, which is just odd. I mean, we live in a very liberal area. Um, I feel sorry for people who are conservative, to be honest, who live around here. Um, so it's just very weird to me that we would have staff at a university who think um, for some reason, and this, this is not counting people who have medical exemptions. Um, it's actually not even counting the people who have religious exemptions. Um, these are just people who are like, no, I'm not getting one and you can't make me. So I actually, because of where I work, I actually get sent the list every week and I usually ignore it, but I looked a couple of times and I was surprised at some of the people who were on it. People I knew that I just, it wouldn't have occurred to me that they would be anti-vaxxers. And, you know, it makes me want to contact them and say, hey, just so you know, the re one of the reasons you get vaccinated is for people like me who have a compromised immune system. Um and can't develop antibodies either from getting sick or getting vaccinated as well as other people can. In fact, there was, um, there was a study that showed that people who were taking similar drugs to me, which is that's why my, my immune system is compromised. I, I take mess and that deliberately compromises my immune system because I have MS. But it's like, we literally, people like me literally developed almost no antibodies from the vaccine. I mean, obviously I get it anyway, because every little bit helps, but um, it's just like, I, I, I don't get you. Um, I just don't understand. So, um, I do understand fear and everything. Uh, my son has a friend who's phob who's got a needle phobia, but then what you do is you ask your doctor to give you a tranquilizer um, for when you get vaccinated. So I don't know. I mean, obviously it's the same person who actually got COVID. Um, so I don't know, it's like, I don't like telling people to do, but I don't mind pointing out to them 
why there is a good reason for why they're being asked to do it. I'm sick all the time, all the time. I get the flu shot every year. I got the flu four times last year. I wasn't even being exposed to that many people because I wasn't working on campus. I was working at home and I still got the flu four times. So, you know, the flu is a pain and it's annoying and I hate being sick all the time, but COVID is potentially has long-term effects. The last thing I need <clears throat> with all my health problems is to get another one, to be honest. So, I don't know. I mean, as, as I was saying earlier, I'm not a confrontational person. Um, I think my reaction to seeing people I was really surprised about um, was like bemusement, just shaking my head. Harper Shaw, hey, how's Trick still loving spraying your jet around? Okay. That's, I guess, the guy who started us in this or something like that. I can't remember. We're sending us a lot of jobs, I think. Narrowly missed out on another RV today. This, oh gosh. Okay. Where are we? Where's my messages? Um... Harper Shaw narrowly missed out on another RV today. This thing was uglier than a chihuahua chewing a wasp, but it would have been my little wasp chewing choo-choo. Oh, they mean, he means, I guess it's a he. It means that he missed out on an RV. I don't remember that he was looking for one, but apparently he was. So anyway, there's my soliloquy, such as it is, on vaccines. Um, I don't know. Some things blow my mind. Like, <clears throat> I think before this the pandemic started, I think it was beforehand, this kid, um, there's a news story about this kid who got tetanus almost died like and had and even though he didn't die had like months and months of rehab ahead of him so you kind of think okay well now his parents know like his parents were defiantly anti-vaxxer so you're kind of like okay well now after this kid went through all this and almost died like he could have died his parents must um must have agreed to, for him to get a tetanus shot, right? No. <laughs> no. I mean, their kid almost died. Um, and they're like, no, we're not, we're still not going to do vaccines. I was just like, what? Come on, your kid. At such a young age, I don't think he was any older than like 12. I don't understand how someone could see their child suffer and almost die and not say, hey, you know what? The result of not getting them definitely could be worse than getting them. Um, but no, these people are like, nope, we're not gonna. I just, as a parent, I just do not understand that. I, I can't, I cannot in any way get in touch with the reasoning. Um, parents hate seeing their children suffer. They hate it. It's worse than suffering themselves. Um, and, and parents, I mean, most parents, well, okay, good parents would gladly change places with their child if their child is ill or in any kind of pain, in, in any kind of pain. So it's just... It's just very strange to me. Um, I, I know all the arguments. I know the arguments supposedly about autism. That was completely debunked. The guy who came up with this quote unquote study um, has been completely, the doctor, it was found out that he completely skewed the results of the study. 
Um, his medical license was taken away. The study was retracted, all sorts of stuff. And he's making lots and lots of money speaking to and consulting to anti-vaxxer groups, which I don't know, was that like his whole plan? Very strange. Um, I understand, I understand the fear, um, but to me, honestly, I'd rather have a child who's on the spectrum than dead. Like, you know, I mean, but that's just me. Um, and a lot of worse things can happen. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, there was no vaccine for mumps and, God, what was the other thing we had? Mumps and measles. <laughs> um, so, Um, so I remember when my sister and I both had mumps, it was extremely painful. Um, and then I remember when I got measles, we were visiting friends of the family. My mom was pregnant with my youngest sister. So it was like 1969, 1970. Um, no measles vaccine. So we were just, vi we were visiting this family we knew. And I, sometimes you misremember things, but I'm pretty sure this is what the case was. I was seven at the time. We're, we're like pulling away in the car, go down the drive. And a little while after that, I'm like, hey, I don't, I have like these... What did I call them? I have these dots on me. And um, <laughs> I remember <coughs> being somewhat offended because everyone started panicking about my mom. Um, you know, I was diagnosed with measles. We found out that um, one of the kids, I think, in the family we just visited had him. Um, luckily, my mom did not get them. Um, but I was like really offended that I was the one that was sick and everyone was worrying about my mom. So then my poor parents for, oh, I can't remember what time of year it was. So I don't know how long they had to wait. My sister was born in January and there definitely was not snow. Um, I'm not even sure if it was cold. So it was probably <clears throat> sometime in the fall, I'm guessing. Um, so they had to wait a few months to see if my sister was going to have birth defects because we also did not have amniocentesis, the amniocentesis test at that point. So, um, yeah, so she came out fine. Uh, I mean, I could joke and say she didn't, but she came out fine. Um, but it's just like, I, I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I can't, I just can't get in touch with, um, the thinking that would, um, keep someone from getting a vaccine or have their child getting a vaccine for a highly contagious, um, illness like measles a few years ago there was a big outbreak at Disneyland um, I think it was like people from another country who were not vaccinated who were at Disneyland and they spread it to a bunch of other people and people kind of like blow off measles nowadays sometimes because um, because we're not used to it. I mean, we just, we don't see it much anymore. So people forget how horrendous it can be. Um, that it can actually permanently give permanent brain damage. Um, that there's, there are some things, the same thing as with COVID, 
we don't know with COVID if there's anything that's permanent. We do know there's, there are some things that are long-term, but we don't know yet if there's anything that's permanent. Um, but, but you can have permanent, um, that's the word I'm looking for. You, you know, you can have some form of disability that's permanent from getting measles. There are, you know, several different things that could happen. And it just, it doesn't make sense, you know? Um, I, I mean, if it's, if it's the flu, okay, I kind of get it. We, the flu comes around every year. If you're not high risk, you don't live with someone who's high risk, I understand. Um, and that's why it's not mandated, because... Um, there is no, you know, it, it generally, um, it's, it's not going to be anything more than an annoyance for most of the population if they get it. Um, even me, I mean, I don't love getting it three or four times a year, but I survive. I don't have any permanent, um, you know side effects or whatever there's there you know i don't have anything permanent but i mean it definitely sucks because i'm not able to get stuff done but it's the flu so i kind of understand some people are like oh i just i keep forgetting to get my shot i totally understand that um but when it's something that could either kill you or um, leave you permanently disabled in some way or leave someone else permanently disabled or dead. I don't know. I just don't get it. So anyway, long, long ramble. Um, I'm not saying I didn't get nervous when my son had his vaccines, but I, I knew what the alternatives were. Um, I mean, my husband's mother got scarlet fever. Um, I, as a child or a young person, and decades later, um, there were repercussions. So it's like, people are like, scarlet fever, what's that? Oh, we don't know what it is because no one gets it anymore. And we don't know how bad it is. I mean, I'm not gonna go into what happened because that's, you know, that's my husband's private business. But um, it, it wasn't good. So I think the problem is when we forget things, as a society, we forget how bad some things can be and we, we minimize them. I mean, I've been guilty of it in the past over some things, um, but if you don't have exposure to something, then it's too easy to forget um, what it can do. Yeah, this has been a fun year and a half. Really fantastic. Um, and it is having a lasting effect for us because we'll never be back to 100% in person because the campus uh, is basically left it up to the individual employees, their supervisors, their units to decide how they were going to do business. If they were going to do business in person, uh, if they were going to have a hybrid schedule, you know, um, whether they were going to try to get everyone to be on the same page or whatever. Well, 
a lot of people, especially people who had long commutes or people who had kids or elderly parents they were caring for or other situations that they found were just so much easier once they were working from home. Like me, I get sick all the time. So I actually, before the pandemic, had no sick days and no vacation days because I used up all my sick days and then I moved on to using up my vacation days. So at some points I actually ended up not getting paid because I had run out of vacation and sick days and I was still sick. So I had to take, um, I had to take unpaid sick time. So, you know, um, so for people in certain situations, it's much easier to work from home. I don't like it necessarily. Um, I would like to work on campus like three days a week, but only if there were going to be other people in my office who are there. I mean, there's not a lot of point for my mental health in working on campus when like every office around me is empty. It doesn't, I mean, I like being on campus, that helps um, my mental health, but it would help my mental health a lot more if things were back to normal or semi-normal, but that's not, you know, that's not gonna happen. So, um, so it truly is the new normal because this is permanent. So, but I have to say, if my son were younger, oh my God, this would have been such a godsend. The money we spent, for one thing, on before and after school care, oh my God, we spent so much money. And then the problem was because he had ADHD, um, he had a lot of those phone calls from the school and from summer camps and stuff, after school program, before school program saying, you need to come pick him up. And it was like, I can't, my husband can't, my husband's traveling. My husband works in San Francisco, like 50 minutes away, we can't. Um, you know, and me having to leave work or, you know, my, my parents going to pick him up. Um, it would have obviously been a huge relief if um, we were working from home. But um, I still would like things back somewhat back to normal like they were. And it would be one thing if I knew this was just temporary, but I know it's permanent. So it does make me kind of sad. Um, I mean, I'm kind of an introvert. Well, actually I am an introvert, but that doesn't mean I don't like people. It just means that I get enervated, like de-energized. I lose energy from um, interacting with other people and I need to recharge by being you know, by being by myself. Doesn't mean I don't like people. I do like people. And I miss the casual conversations that I had with people. Um, I miss just saying to a coworker, hey, you wanna go grab a coffee or you wanna do something at lunchtime or, you know, I mean, it's, um, it's, it's definitely sad to a great extent, but I'm trying to adjust to, oh wow, the whole one's done. I'm trying to adjust to the fact that it is, it is what it is. And that's, that's the way it's gonna be. That makes me wanna cry, to be honest. Um, the, the department I worked in, chemistry, before I moved to the one I'm in, it was so great. I'm not saying the one I'm in isn't great, but you know what? I've met very few people 
in my department in person. It's very weird. Um, I think on one occasion, one day, I was in at the same time as my boss. She likes to say we're colleagues, but she's my boss, um, who I adore. Um, one time, and I've been there, been in that department 13 months, one time, so weird. Um, and I loved, you know, I loved when I worked in chemistry, I loved the people I worked with in the chair's office. We, um, it's like now we have to like set up a time to talk to each other, which, uh, I just, I don't, I don't like it. Um, we're just sitting there looking at each other on Zoom. It's not the same thing. Um, so, I, all those, I mean, probably basically for the rest of my life, unless I go to work like in the chancellor's office or something, um, that's how it's going to be. I'm not going to have like an in-person relationship with people. Um, it's, definitely a bummer. I mean, I don't disagree with those CEOs who like, I don't in one way disagree with those CEOs who are like, no, we have to, people have to come back into the office because that's the best way for stuff to get done. Um, I don't totally disagree with them, but I think that there are people whose lives are so much easier, um, working from home and, uh, I think what those CEOs will find out that if they insist people come into the office, then those people are going to find another company that will let them work from home or have a flexible arrangement. So a lot of them are older, these CEOs. In fact, I think almost all of them are older. Um, and they're, I think they're just out of touch. Like this one guy... Jamie Dimon, who runs one of the banks, or they're not even just banks anymore, you know, brokerage firms, banks, brokerage firms, whatever you want to call them. I forget which one. I'm not being coy and not saying which one. I just can't remember. Um, he was like, oh, no, yeah, people, he basically said, yeah, people are going to come back in person or they're not going to have a job. And first of all, he's like my age, I think. I don't think he's a lot older than me. And I was like, oh man, you are just totally out of touch. But um, it's freaking Wall Street. You know what? No one, people don't, people are only on the trading floor because they enjoy being on the trading floor. Everything is done by computer. Everything. And it's been that way for decades. Um, so it's like, why are you insisting people be there in person? Why? Um, it's a toxic work environment in many ways. So it's not too surprising, but they'll, well, they'll learn. Um, the companies that are giving people the flexibility are the ones that are going to uh, get the best employees, have loyal employees, you know, they're, um, and you have an employee who's grateful to you, um, and who you treat well, you're going to get good work out of them. So I've worked a lot of different places and Without question, the thing that motivated me more than anything was being appreciated, being honestly appreciated by my boss, by the person I was working, person or people I was working for. So anyone who's gotten into my age and um, doesn't understand that shouldn't be running whatever the company is. It's not Bear Stearns, is it? 
not Amex, not Amex. I forget. Anyway, the guy's been on a in a few different companies, so that's why I can't remember. Um. Anyway, I'm completely rambling this today. I don't know why. Probably because I miss talking to my coworkers. Um, as much as I love my husband and son, seeing only them, for the most part, the last, how long is it now? 18 months? Something like that. Um, it's not what I would have preferred. I mean, we've been really lucky. No one in our immediate family has gotten COVID. Um, no one we know personally has died of COVID. Uh, you know, we, we've been really lucky because that's not the case. I do know someone who had a relative just die and when I talked to her about it, they weren't sure it possibly was due to COVID. That's the closest I've gotten. So uh, you can't be a lot luckier than that. Um, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky I was able to work from home. I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about it because I, both my husband and I can work from home and we're allowed to, so. I feel incredibly lucky. I used to work in retail. If I was still working in retail. I wouldn't have been working for months and months and months. And then when I went back to work, I'd have to worry about, are the people coming in here vaccinated? Could I be talking to someone who has COVID? Am I, you know, I'm, I've got a sniffles. Is that the beginning of COVID? Um, you know, not getting sick days because retail sucks you get like the absolute bare minimum of things like sick time and vacation time and stuff like that um so i'm incredibly lucky and the people who are like why why are all the staff at like food service and everything why are they not going back to their jobs you know why because their jobs suck their jobs absolutely suck and that was before you started getting really angry people who didn't want to put masks on when they came in to the store or the restaurant. Um, their jobs suck. They're very difficult. Even if they enjoy them because they just enjoy what they do, generally the companies and the owners um, are either screwing them because they can or they're being screwed out of like sick and vacation time because the owner can't afford to pay people to be out sick or to pay people to be on vacation. So um, that is why a lot of people are not coming back to food service and retail. Um, retail is a lot of times one of those jobs you fall into, like I did. And um, I was in retail about three years, and then I was like, oh, yeah, this is it. Um, actually, I didn't decide that was it. My doctor, because I had a bleeding ulcer, was like, um, you have to find another profession because uh, you keep going the way you're going with this job. Um, you're going to be facing surgery, uh, all sorts of stuff. I think he probably tried to do scare tactics on me, but he didn't really need to do much because the stress, I was working at the Disney store. The stress was just unbelievable. My best friend came in to the store with her fiance to tell me they had just gotten engaged. I couldn't even take two minutes to talk to her because I had a feeling that the person uh, that had just come up to the register had actually stolen all the stuff they were trying to return. And so I couldn't pass it on to someone else. I mean, it's like little things like that, you know. Um, 
working on the weekend and holidays when other people, you know, aren't. Stuff like that. So it's like I know the for some people the popular opinion is that it's the unemployment that's keeping people from going back to work. Um, I was on unemployment <laughs> once. When I got fired right after I was diagnosed with MS, my boss fired me. And um, you know what? You can't live on unemployment. So um, you have to start looking for other reasons. Um, I can tell you that the cushy, um, the cushy living from getting an unemployment check is, is not the reason why people are not going back to work. I promise you. So, um, I am very grateful for being in the type of job I'm in and working for a university that, um, while they are definitely business people to a great extent, they, I think, are kept honest to some degree by the students and the unions. So, um, hey, anyone who uh, was in retail or food service and there is a university or college near you, consider working there. Especially if you will be protected by a union. Definitely check it out because um, like where I work as a public university, um, we don't make, we don't get huge salaries. I mean, I definitely would be making more in the private sector, but you get really good benefits and they really, really try not to lay people off. So during, um, during the recession, um, both, well, both recessions like 2008 and the kind of COVID recession, they do everything they can to keep from laying people off. Um, I mean, they just, they have meetings and committees about, okay, how can we, how can we cut as few jobs as possible? So I definitely appreciated that. Especially because, um, I started in 2007, and obviously it wasn't much later that the um, 2000 the crash happens with the housing and all that stuff. And um, I was so I was the most recent person in the department, but I still was fairly sure that I was not going to get laid off. But um, I've been in the private sector. Uh, one place, the company's stock, because of mistakes that upper management made, their stock dropped. Oh, and by the way, ignoring what people were telling them about these things. Like, oh no, you don't want to actually, when you're a healthcare company, you don't actually want to build your own software because that makes absolutely no sense. Why would you want to do that? Buy something off the shelf and have the company customize it for you. Nope. It was a lot of hubris. And so what happened was because of that and some other news hit at the same time. Probably had to do with um, profits. Uh, the stock dropped 75% in one day. So who starts getting laid off? Do the vice presidents start getting laid off? I mean, does the president get fired by the board? No. Nope. And I also worked at Walden Books Corporate Headquarters, 
way back when. Um, they got bought by Kmart. Kmart started having um, financial problems and decided that they were gonna cut jobs at Bottom Books. So like a bunch of idiots, they paid a company like, it wasn't just a million dollars, was it? Okay, let's say at least a million dollars to come in. In theory, they were going to interview every single employee. And this was a corporate headquarters, so there actually were not as many as you might think to run a national chain of bookstores. Um, I mean, all of us were doing like five jobs already. Um, they were supposed to interview everyone and decide which jobs could be consolidated, which jobs should be eliminated. Um, so being a secretary, I was pretty sure that my job was safe because what I had seen in the past is that what they do is they cut like middle management and give all their work to secretaries. That's what we were called then was secretaries. You know, they give all their work to administrative positions and you'd end up doing twice as much work, but at least you had a job. So, um, so I wasn't really nervous, but I also figured when all the people were gossiping and staying around trying to figure out who was gonna get fired, I figured, you know, if you wanna look essential, maybe not stand around gossiping. Um, so I just kept my head down and kept working. You know what? They never interviewed me. Never interviewed anyone I knew, except my boss. Um, and I, I swear to God, they just drew some names out of a hat, some positions. I, I mean, like, they didn't make any sense. Because I could have looked and said it. <clears throat> Oh, you know what? Those two jobs could be consolidated. And things would still be pretty, pretty much, you know, working fine. Um, they didn't do anything that made any sense. So. So some of these companies, what happens is when <clears throat> someone at the top screws up, someone, people at the bottom or in the middle are the ones who suffer, you know, because when the CEO screws up and gets let go or asked to step down, they usually have these contracts that have guaranteed them a certain amount of money if that happens. Generally, depending on the size of the company, they're leaving with millions of dollars. Um, you know, you're the poor person who's worked your way up from, you know, a starting position to, you know, a middle manager position where you make a, an okay amount of money. Um, not an insanely great amount of money, but, you know, it's okay. You might be able to afford to send your kids to college without too many scholarships. You're the one who's going to get fired, or not fired, laid off. Through no fault of your own. Because the idiot at the top who just left the company with millions of dollars um, screwed up. So... It's pretty sad. Uh, like this don't doesn't ever seem to change it just seems to you know the bad behavior keeps getting rewarded there are no caps <clears throat> don't seem to be any caps on these salaries and um oops am i falling off yes i am i'm in one of those positions where i yeah you can't really jump in this game I'm, oh yeah there we go um Anyway, I'm definitely not negative, 
about business. I actually think business is really fascinating. But um, it never seems to change. I don't understand it. Hey, what was that? I have no idea. Um, so I'm trying to think. If I get off this roof, ooh, I should probably get that while I'm on this level. Um, well, I think I'm just going to have to use a ladder anyway. Um, I can't seem to pull up my ladder. Now I can't remember where I want. Oh, I want to get on top of this. Okay, let's see. Maybe if I get up here... It's not like I can jump or anything. But, well, how am I going to do the other side? I have to be able to pull the ladder up. But every time I lean over to try to pick it up, <clears throat> I start sliding over the side. So. I mean, if I absolutely had to, I suppose I could move the, the whatchamacallit, the scaffolding, but that seems kind of stupid when all I really need. The problem is, is getting it to there. Give me that. Okay. So yeah, see, they anticipated this, that we were going to need this. My son is looking for his first, well, his first real job, his first full-time job. He, um, he loves computers and, um, just working with computers. He loves it. So he, um, he did kind of an internship a couple years ago at his school in the summer. Um because his school, every kid had a Chromebook because, um, you know, their curriculum was really, um, to a great extent, online. And um, so they all had Chromebooks. And then, of course, in the summer, those Chromebooks had to be fixed because they're middle school and high school students. And I'm not trying to throw shade on middle school and high school students, but, you know. Generally, they were not really, really careful. And stuff happens. So, um, so anyway, he and a couple other kids helped the IT guy fix these, like do inventory, fix the Chromebooks, and fix the teacher's um, laptops. So, um... So he realized that he just, this was, this was what he wanted to do, at least in part. So we're hoping he'll find something that, you know, when you start out in the business, you have to be willing to start, obviously, the low man on the totem pole, especially if you haven't gone to college. So... Um, and even like with me, when you are a stay at home mom for years and then get back into working, you know, I knew I was going to have to start out with a pretty low level job, which I did. And I just worked my way up. Um, so hopefully... As a parent, I'm hoping that he does not have to spend too much time. Um, wow, how do I get off of here with the ladder? Maybe pop it over here. 
Um, so we're hoping he doesn't have to spend too much time at the bottom. And also hoping that, did that actually get all done? No, office cladding, what the heck? Um, you know, it's, we live in an expensive area of the country and obviously you do make more money because of that than you would in, you know, for the same job in other areas, but it's still, still really expensive. Um, I mean, we're able to pay our bills, but we haven't been able to take a vacation in five years, I think, and go anywhere. Um, it's expensive. What are you going to do? Um, so, not complaining. But it would be nice. I'd like to go back to Disneyland. That would be fun. Um, oh, okay, so I suppose I could just jump or fall. Okay, so what do I want to work on? Might be a nice change of pace to do. I don't know, something different. I mean, I could do the back, but I feel like I should save that. Okay, so what's the most boring part? And also, how dirty is it? Oh, see, that's not... Oh, if I use the metal cleaner? On which part? Garage clouding. Okay. So like the whole, not the whole front, like this is multi, would be multi-purpose because it's bricks. Hmm. So I got to keep that in mind. Now what's that stuff? It's not telling me. Oh, lichen. That's what I thought it was. The yellow stuff, yellow brown stuff. Of course I start where I have the, the ladder propped up. That makes no sense. I put it over here because I wasn't gonna work on this. <sighs> well, I have a 99, five or six temp, so that's why I'm not making a lot of sense. It's probably why I'm rambling a lot too. Now, Ooh, uh, yeah, I think, I think I want to use some detergent. I have to say that if one of the special jobs pops up, I'm going to jump on it. Um, ooh, maybe when I finish this, then they'll get back to me and say, hey, can you clean the uh, fire trucks? I'd really like that. Um, shop. Cleaning liquids. Metal. How much money do I have? Is, now, is that how much I... Yeah, that's how much I have. Oh, my God. Takes even longer than um, House Flipper to make money. Jeez. I mean... <sighs> slow. This job... Okay, so this job is... Oh... That's the job. That's not how much money I have. How much money do I have? Wait a minute. Okay. Okay, that is how much money I have because this job is going to... Oh my God, I've only made 186 out of 1100 for this job. This is a huge job. So that whole time, I only made 186 so far. Wow. Okay. Um, definitely not going to consider doing this for a living. Okay, so this kind of fizzes, so, oh, I don't want to do it on the bricks because it's wasting it. Hmm. 
Now it's metal. That's metal. It works really well. Works better than the multi-purpose did on the roof. This is garage door frame, so that's probably wood. I don't see that I'll get the wood cleaner. Why isn't this getting clean? Okay, so we are definitely cutting down on the amount of time it's gonna take. That's metal, right? Yes. Okay. I guess I should look at it that if it takes less time, then I can do more jobs, right? Is that metal? Yes. Um, so even though I'm spending money on the cleaning stuff, business-wise it does make some plastic. Really? That's plastic? No, that's metal. What's plastic? Garage door frame, that's probably wood. Garage cladding is plastic. Oh shoot, was I wasting metal planer on it? Okay, so that it part is metal, but the under part is plastic, okay. I'll make sure it's metal and that's metal, okay. I just don't wanna waste this stuff, it's not cheap. I realize that I'm wasting some of it on this thing, but I'm gonna waste as little as possible. Okay, metal, metal, plastic, okay. Door is metal, this is metal. I wonder if I should try Doing, using the plastic stuff. It doesn't seem, well, I guess I could get one bottle and that would do um, all the underside. That's metal, right? Yeah, I just feel like I need to keep double checking. This is all metal, okay. Um, glass, multi-purpose. Oh, so this is like tile or something? That's plastic. Okay, so it does actually make sense to get some plastic cleaner. So this down here probably is, yeah, multi-purpose, plastic, multi-purpose, okay. Um, uh, yeah, that's kind of all over the place. Metal? Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this bottle. Is that metal? Yeah. I should probably get close so I'm not wasting it. Um, that's like wood or something, right? That's plastic. Metal. I'm just trying to use this like in a sensible way. Okay, that's metal. Just finish the bottle off. What's that? Glass, wood. I mean, I don't see any point in like wood, wood. Really? Wood, glass. Okay. Um, and buying too many different cleaners. You know, that's a pain. So that's multi-purpose. Okay, so I still have a little left, right? Okay, so um, I'm thinking. So I think I'm gonna buy some plastic stuff. Plastic cleaner, metal cleaner, plastic cleaner. I'm gonna get two. Wood, I don't think I'm gonna get wood cleaner. Um, okay, so I think I have to choose the plastic or I will end up using more of the metal plastic. Okay. Um, can I change how wide the circle is? I probably can, but I don't know how. Okay, so this is the plastic cleaner and that's plastic, right? Yeah. That's plastic? Yeah. 
Doesn't look like it's very dirty anymore. Um, that's metal. Plastic? Yeah. Um, wood. So the bulk of it was actually over on the side, right? Yeah, so metal, and that's all plastic. This shows not to assume that you know what something is composed of. I mean, is this, am I wasting this just to do this on this overhang? Yeah, so let's, I'll do it on this one. And I guess I'll use it on top of that one whenever I do it. But, refill cleaning liquid. Uh, I guess so. That's pretty bad. And it's really narrow and I feel like I'm going to be wasting a lot of it. So I don't want to use too much. What about back here? Oh, it doesn't look like much of this is plastic. Yeah, that would be multi-purpose. Okay, so I have most of a bottle of plastic stuff. That's plastic. Wow. Is that? No, that's metal. No wonder it wasn't working. So what? Seriously? This is plastic. This is metal. That doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll use the rest of this on... I don't know. Am I going to... Yeah. There. Was this... Oh my God, this was all plastic. Well, I wasn't using any stuff on it, but still, it could have been. So this is plastic. So I think that makes sense. I'm gonna fall or not. Office overhang, is that plastic? No, it's metal, okay. Let's see, it's multi-purpose. Is that oh that's plastic too? Okay, I'm almost out. I am out. Uh I think I'll buy another one because I could use a whole whole bottle on this area, I think. Did it refill? Yeah. I can't help notice that your ad says power wash. You do realize that involves hot water. You should change the wording on your ad to pressure wash unless you're planning an upgrade soon. Uh, okay. I do understand what they're saying. I didn't name it. I, does that mean we're gonna get hot water soon? And how would that happen? Is there like a heater? Some kind of sprayer with a heater in it? Uh, wood. Okay. Then there's that one over on the side, the overhang. I have no idea how I would get up there. I suppose a ladder. Uh, let's see. I think I'm going to change to the regular one.
need to start walking. I used to do that on campus at lunchtime. It was kind of a tough walk too, because the way back, it was a pretty steep hill. So I got out of the office. I, I get out less working from home than I did when I was on campus, which is not a healthy direction to go in. Um, hmm. Office overhang still has a lot. Um, Um, let's see. That noise I heard was actually some bots following me. Yay. That's what I always wanted. They follow you in the hopes that you'll then click on their account. Can't remember exactly what happens, but basically, you don't do it. I probably should be using green, I think. Yeah. I think the yellow is just too narrow, and then it takes longer. And while this is fun, not being just a plain old house, it is freaking big. So, uh, and it's difficult to clean, I have to say, in certain parts. Oh, God, it's dark outside again, and the curtains are open. Honestly, it's just like a pure habit that that really creeps me out. When I was younger, I, like on two separate occasions, there were guys who were stalking me. And so I just got to feel like one of them would stand across the street from my apartment. So I got to feeling unsafe. And our curtains, the apartment I'm thinking of, I actually share with someone. We had blinds and then we had curtains I had made, but they weren't like full curtains. I can't really describe them. But, um, so he was able to see in. And I just, developed a habit of like freaking out, not freaking out, but being uncomfortable if people could see in, like, cause it was dark outside and it was light inside. So, um, I'm gonna go close the curtains. I mean, sometimes, to be perfectly honest, my first thought is I don't want anyone seeing how messy our living room is, but it's both at different times. Okay, so what's this thing? This is the office overhang. Why is it so... dirty still is it because of what's underneath how did I get up here anyway oh yeah that's right I climbed on top of the roof okay so this thing is huh. 
Huh. So it's saying it's not even not even half done. I don't see how that's possible. Is it just this thing? This is the overhang. That's just just this part. Yeah. Okay, why does it look like but I mean, I did the top and some of the sides and some of the bottom. So how can it not even be? Because it goes all the way over here. That's why. Oh, man. I'm going to have to get up on the ladder because I can't go around that side. Not wide enough. Okay. So this is... Again, it's plastic. Oh, man, my angle is not good on that. Oh, look at that. Shoot. Uh, that's not getting me anywhere. I don't like using the red one because it's so narrow. It takes forever. I don't think I have a choice. I, I mean, I have to use the yellow one. But the, the problem is, I don't think I was able to really get up there with the detergent. Wow, that's like not budging. Look at that. I could actually get on the ladder and get up there with detergent. I think I have to figure out if it's worth it. I still might not have a great angle. There's like, okay, multi-purpose, multi-purpose stuff. Because this is just mm, not good. Uh, cleaning liquid, multi-purpose cleaner. Okay. Was that filled? Yeah. Refill? Okay. Um, yeah, this is just going to take, that's metal, right? Yeah. It's going to take forever. Wow. Even with this stuff, it's going to take forever. Office wall. How? Oh. Okay. Oh, so you really have to get up close for this to work well. That's expensive, though. Look, I'm almost out, out of that bottle. It's just kind of horrifying that you go through so many of these. Uh, like I said, I guess the faster I do this, the faster I go on to another job. I, I think that is financially sound. I'm not sure. Yeah, look at that. Is that, oh, that's glass. I'm not using glass cleaner. I'm not getting that specific. Maybe metal cleaner on the other thing, but. Maybe. Doesn't seem to really work on metal. So forget it. Um, almost at the end of that bottle. Uh, refill cleaning liquid. Okay, I'm um, switching to the regular one. I'm not using up all my stuff. Maybe I should do green. This is, um, I'll do yellow around the small areas that I attack. But then on the tile, I think I'll use the green. Okay, so the window is clean. I need to clean the window frame. Oh, good, because I was a little worried about having to um, get on top of that window frame because that would be tricky. Okay.
Okay. Is that the... <clears throat> oh, it's a light. I thought maybe it was like the fire alarm. Okay. Okay, so I was going to use green, right? I'm almost done. With the wall, I think, right? Okay, but there are some, like, areas that just need to be gone over. Oh, yeah, that's bad. Although that's probably more... Okay, so that's done. I'm going to switch to the yellow to do this part because it looks bad. Did I do this? No, I didn't have to do that, did I? Okay. Okay. Um. This really needs to get done. If it's not moving along, I'll use the metal cleaner. Eh. I guess it's going okay. Did I finish that? Why does it look dirty? Is that just a shadow? It's just a shadow. Okay. So that guy was saying I can't call myself a power washer. I have to call it a pressure washer. Why is that dirty? Why is that like not coming off? I'm shooting right at it. Oh, wow. I mean, even with the metal cleaner, <sighs> you know, I think, I think for the last little bit, what time is it? Oh, I've been going two hours. So I think what I'm going to do is hop over to the, um, uh, what's this thing? Why is it? It's not letting me. Oh, yeah, I can. I'm going to hop over the forest cottage and do a little on that. We are two humble confectioners, brother and sister living on our own deep in the woods of the National Park. And there's absolutely nothing strange about that. We are also the creators of the finest gingerbread ever to grace the county, but to stay on top, we need constant reinvention, and our dream forest home has become a grubby grotto, affecting our ability to dream up wonderful new recipes. Can you come and restore our cottage and with it our creative flow? Danka. Um, sure. Oh my God, it's only $500? $500? This thing better be tiny. So I'm going to do a little of this. I feel kind of crappy, probably because I have a fever, but I do enjoy doing this and sharing it with other people. Okay, that's not tiny. Seriously, guys, how cheap are you? I really should start on the roof. I don't think I have it in me. Oh, that is nice. Feels like it's raining it sounds like it's raining but it's not okay so i'm gonna i know it's natural for people to be suspicious but we really are who we say we are yeah oh you're not you're not um witches who are considering pushing me in the oven and cooking and eating me wow this it does not come off easily does it okay so you know what we're gonna do we are going to use the multi-purpose cleaner. We're not going to be masochists here. Okay, so that's multi-purpose cleaner, refill. Okay. Oh, but I should be closer, really. All right? Yeah, it seems to work better then. I mean, did this place get so dirty because they couldn't get anyone to come and clean it? Because look at this. It's like, I know that's glass, but hello. Why isn't the cleaner working a little better? I mean, 
Seems like it's not making an impact and I'm almost through one bottle. Let's see. Uh, no, that's bad. This, this cleaner. Oh, do I have to do that too? Oh, do I have to do the wall? Are you kidding? This whole thing is $500. That's all? That's a ripoff. If I was really running a business, I would have said no. Seriously. Because that's just not enough money. I mean, that whole wall? Probably both sides, right? Presumably. Maybe not, because I can't seem to get over it. But this, I have to do this side of the wall. I mean, it does seem to, the multi-paper stuff does seem to clean up the stucco pretty well. But it does not seem to do that well on the wood and the stone. So, yeah, it, it does crappy on the wood. So I guess I'm going to have to use wood cleaner. I guess we'll see how how well that works. It does. The multipurpose does work well on the stucco. I'm beginning to think I'm going to use cleaner on most stuff from now on. It is so much faster. I don't have my ladder, so yes, it would make sense to get my ladder, but I'm not getting it right now. What about on the stone? Nope, doesn't seem to work on the stone. Oh, there's a scaffolding. Great, except... Is that my scaffolding? Is that why i have now seeing it everywhere? I somehow got a scaffolding. Hey, listen, it takes a lot of work to put up a scaffolding. So I'm not going to take these these penny ante rates anymore. Sorry, it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, I don't have a choice. Maybe I should send the developer some input and say, hey, don't you think that... Uh, these jobs ought to be paid a little more. I mean, $500 to do this entire thing and a wall? That's just not enough. Especially if you had to set up scaffolding. I know I didn't really have to set it up. Like, but still, it's the principle. Okay, so I'm almost out of this bottle. I don't know if that's the last one. I definitely am gonna try using the, the wood cleaner because um, the multi-purpose cleaner does n like nothing on this wood, at least. And the glass, and the glass and the stone, I mean, it does nothing. Like, no. It's, it's like, barely makes any impact, especially all the stone wall. Uh, yeah. <laughs> of course, I'm not sure how often... The stock in the store, wow, this is nasty, um, refreshes. So I could end up then not having cleaner for the next job, which, uh, what is the next job? Oh, the skate park, probably. Um, so maybe I ought to take stock. Does it show me how much I have? Uh, it doesn't seem to tell me what I have. Okay, so let's get wood cleaner. Ooh, yeah, this is out of stock, so glass cleaner, stone cleaner. Oh, Lord. Okay, so what do I want to do first? Um, so what is that made out of? Main roof, wood. Holy crap. I guess I want to do wood first. Oh, wait, I'm at wrong one. Okay. This and then change to wood. Do I have to do refill? No. Okay. Um, this better work. Yeah. 
it's kind of hard to know when this is actually clean. Okay, it does end up looking better. That's wood, right? Where did all the paint come from? Well, no, what's that? That's stone. Um, did someone graffiti their place or something? Okay, so it does work pretty well on the, uh, what's that called? Timber frame. I'm not sure about the roof. Maybe I need to be closer for it to actually look like it's working. Refill cleaning liquid. Well, the skate park is going to be mostly metal. So if I conserve that, I should be good. There might be plastic too. Um, okay. Now I wish I did have hot water. I wonder if I'm going to get that. I mean, it is called power wash. So presumably at some point. Okay, let's get the bad cross pieces and sides. I can't believe how hard this wood is to clean. I mean, that's really, really bad. Just my last bottle. Doesn't say it does it. I think it's a waste to try to spray the cleaner any further away than that. Um, down like at the bottom. If I'm out of wood cleaner, I think I'm gonna switch to the stone out of wood cleaner. Well, there's a stone chimney, for instance. How much stone stuff did I get? It doesn't tell me. Okay, so stones down there. God, that whole stone wall, that's gonna be a pain when I run out of stone cleaner. So what I should probably do, like if there's stone next to wood, I shouldn't go crazy with trying to get every nook and cranny because in cleaning the wood part, I might clean some of the stone. Does that make sense? That's wood. Refill cleaning liquid. I mean, I actually have to do the walls. Walls, 11 walls. Are you freaking kidding me? That's ridiculous. So wait a minute, why does that say 400 if it's supposed to be 500? Uh, thought it was going to be 500. Huh. Are they like cheating me by changing the price? I probably should use glass cleaner because those windows are like really nasty. Let's see. 
Okay, so I've come full circle on the... Oh, Jesus. I can't believe I'm going to have to clean all these. Probably out of, almost out of stone cleaner. Refill cleaning liquid. Okay. I mean, I feel like this is going to be a Sisyphean task, doing the walls. Although, they are, it is coming clean pretty quickly. But, jeez. I, I don't feel like I'm getting paid enough for this. Really. The tummy stone wall. So, am I... No, see, I, I'm not supposed to do the other side. But... So... Crud. Yeah, I guess I can see why it was only... Two-thirds or so. Because I have to do the top, the parts I can reach. I'm almost out of stuff. Am I out? No, I'm not out. Okay, I'm out of stone stuff. But I still have like, what, nine... Eight or nine walls left? Jeez. So what is this made out of? Stone. Of course it is. So do I... No, I guess I just do it from this side. That's a little weird. Out of stone cleaner. So what do I have left? Well, I need to use the glass cleaner. Um, I have metal cleaner and pla oh yeah, those are gonna help me. I still have wood cleaner, right? Yeah, I don't know how many. One, one. I can't really tell. Okay, so glass cleaner. You really have to like. Totally waste it. That's depressing. I'm still gonna have to go over it. I don't remember how many I got. Probably not too many. Probably four maximum. Uh, okay, no window. No window. No glass. Odd glass cleaner. Okay, what about wood cleaner? Because I feel like I should get that door done. I do have at least one bottle. I think that makes sense, right? Out of wood cleaner? Well, I guess I'll buy some. Wood stone cleaner, 10 stone cleaner in stock. Let's face it, I need it on this job. 11 in stock for the wood cleaner. Yep. Um, oh, and I'm totally out of stock on multi-purpose cleaner. It's not like I can't clean without it but you know okay so let's get the door done uh door door's almost done and door frame is i don't think i'd use the word almost uh, the metal parts are a little difficult. I shouldn't be using the cleaner on that. Door's almost done. Okay. Um, what about the frame? Oh, yeah, it's still got a lot of stuff. And probably underneath, too. Uh, it's not bad on this side. Okay, let's see. Ooh. Okay. 
And fortunately, this is wood underneath it, so I'm not totally wasting. Oh, refill cleaning liquid. Um, door frame has just a little left, and I bet it's up here. And I suppose I could get the ladder, but I don't want to. Is that dirt? Uh, it's on top. Yeah, I thought it was. I'm, I'm like, am I going to totally waste this stuff? Come on. Give me a break. Okay. I will get the ladder instead of wasting the cleaning fluid. That's wood down there, so I should get that. Again, it's like, well, which kind of cleaning fluid do I waste? Do I waste the stone or the wood? I mean, preferably neither will be wasted, but I need my ladder. Okay. Shouldn't be a big baby about it. Uh, there. Perfect. Yep. How many times am I going to fall off? Well, one. Go slowly. Okay. I wonder how you get cleaning fluid back in stock. It's just like waiting, probably. Which I'm not terribly good at. Um, is that a wooden window frame? I'm too close to these guys. Yeah. Okay, so while I'm up here, I probably should use the regular nozzle without the cleaning fluid. Uh, green, green. Oh, it's still too close, unfortunately. Okay, so that's, is that dirt or shadow? It's both actually, okay. Um, I mean, I'm too close, I'm not sure. I'm gonna have to do that from the ground, I guess. Is this why I need the scaffolding, or is it just a matter of course it's going to have scaffolding for me from now on? Yes, we moved here just a week after that bank robbery, but people move house all the time. I didn't ask. I really didn't. Bank robbery. I thought this was supposed to be like Hansel and Gretel. Um, so this is only moderately successful because I'm too close. So I'm either going to have to use the scaffolding or just work on it from below, I suppose. Huh. Not bad. Okay, so... So the door, oh right, the door. Yeah, that's right. I was gonna use metal cleaner and then I was like, no. I am actually interested in seeing how much lighter this gets. Because it just looked dingy and dark, but it kind of looks like maybe that's how it was supposed to be. So I'd like to see what it's supposed to look like when it's clean. 
at least part of it. I'm not going to do the whole thing today. As I said, feeling crappy. Feeling crappy, but enjoying myself streaming. How are we doing on this? We're not almost done? No. Okay, so stairs are done. So, oh, I can get that part. It does look really nice. Well, much nicer when it's clean. I suppose I'm gonna have to use red on that. Not the most efficient, but window frame is almost done. Window frame is done. Is the window done? Yes. Um. What's the sign? Can I, I, I can't go out there, right? Okay. Um, ooh. Okay, we're not using red. Ugh, that's getting nowhere. Um, what I'm really trying to work on is the roof. But I'm um, beginning to see the reason for the scaffolding, as weird as it looks. I, I feel like that's not even hitting it. Yeah, it wasn't. That's why. That's right. Um, can I do yellow if I'm closer? Eh, kind of. Oh, that looks, it's not making any kind of impact. Am I going to have to use like the wood cleaner on every single bit of that? I mean, and I'm out of wood cleaner, aren't I? Or is it, no, I'm out of multi-purpose cleaner. Maybe I should, I don't know. I'm not really sure what the best... Um, tactic or plan is. I mean, that's a freaking huge roof. And, like, really sounds like it really needs cleaning fluid, which will not last forever. And this place looks so cute. And it's just a freaking nightmare. I mean, look at that. Even with the yellow one, I mean, it's mostly done. Jeez, this is, this is difficult. I can't believe I'm only getting paid 500 for this. I mean, it's even on the ground. Oh no, that's not ground. That's the wooden frame, timber frame. Great. Is that wall? That wall's not quite done. Yeah, this is like a pain. How little comes off. It's like very porous, I guess, because it's wood. So it's just like holding on to that dirt. Did I finish the window cell? No. Uh, did I do this side? Um, did I finish the frame? No, not even close. Okay, so I'm going to need to stand up and do that. Look at this. Uh, I mean, it's like the stone just like holds on to the dirt, the stone and the wood. I wonder if as I go on in my career on this, 
I can start charging more money because I'm in demand because this amount of money I'm charging is like sure if you're first starting out maybe but five hundred dollars to do this whole house with the paint in the behind roof okay so that's done about this on the timber frame oh there's one part that hadn't gone done oh there's still some of this moss and lichen and all that no wonder it wasn't done I mean, this is, I don't like this. I mean, it's cool because it's different, but I finished. No, the window frame's still not done. Oh, well, because of reasons like that. And the sides, that's the thing is the sides of the frame are not clean. Well, well they're not bad. Look. Oh, and underneath, look at that. Underneath the roof. Wow. Cottage not looking so cute right now. Okay. Okay, so why isn't this window frame done? Is there like some really nasty part that's not showing up? Oh, yeah, there's that. And that. I mean, Probably above it. It's probably it's probably the top of the window sill, window frame, which is like maybe if I just kind of blanket it, because uh, it's I'm not seeing anything. Uh, there's some under there. Okay, cool. Cool and very irritating. Um, is that one done? No. Well, so I think, I don't know, I'm going to do a little more, and I've got to start getting ready for bed, because I definitely need to take some Tylenol, as I can tell I still have a fever. Um, so I guess I'm gonna have to use the red. Where did that pink paint come from? I mean, there's like no explanation, is there? So door is down to the cellar. Uh, that's a ship in the doors. Okay. What's that? Is that something that's, that's weird. I can't tell what that is. I mean, is this guy so defensive because they're Hansel and Gretel and they took over where the witch left off when she died. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm going to have to get up on the ladder for that. I think next time I will do 
start out with a firehouse again. Do some of that. And because I think that's like a three episode project because of that tower in the back. Not to mention the building is huge. So. Like. None of these are easy. Is cellar door not done? Because the handle, is the handle separate? No. So. Why isn't that coming off? Seriously, are you kidding me? I mean, look, it's not. I'm like right on top of it and it's not coming off. How does that make sense? I, I hate having a switch to the red because it's so, it's such a small area. Is there anything that looks like I should use the red here? Well, I do need to use it in this stuff because it won't come off otherwise. All this blue lettering. I don't know what that's for. They didn't really give me any instructions, did they? Um, it's kind of hard to see some of those blue things. Yeah, and that doesn't really help because they look pretty much like the just regular dirt when you do that. So is that the blue? Okay, so yellow. Done. The wall still has a ways to go. And I get the feeling I'm not going to get this wall done without getting up on the ladder. Could be wrong, but... That's what I'm guessing. Oh yeah, look at that. Jeez. I mean, maybe I could get enough done that the, the game will finish it off for me. Yeah, no, it's all, it's all up there. I mean, I could use the red one, but how long is that gonna take? A long time. I mean, look at that. It's gonna take forever. I mean, I should be almost done with a wall, but it's it's not close enough. I could do this side. Maybe that'll do it. Probably not. Yeah, see, I'm too far away for it to really have an impact, even the red. So I'm not really close enough for it to, what is that glowing thing? I really want to know. Um, Okay, so I'm going to finish, oops, I'm going to finish this yellow. Now, what is that? That's the foundation. Oh my God, the foundation could go on a while. I mean, it's the foundation. I guess it depends what they consider the foundation. I mean, that's not the whole foundation, right? Yeah. So it's this part of the foundation. Okay. I really should stop, but I'm just having fun. 
think I'll do get all the blue stuff off. Uh, blue. Kind of looks. The walls, like, yeah, I'm not making any progress really. Okay. Well, so I should probably stop because I'm not feeling well. And it's 8.15, so I should try to get to bed on time. So anyway, to anyone who's been watching this two and a half, oh, two hours and 41 minutes, um, or anyone who's watching the VOD, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it even my babbling and that goes likewise for anyone who's watching the VOD. So next time firehouse and more of the nightmare, uh, it's not a cabin, right? Hut cottage in the woods. And, um, until then take care.